Okay, guys, let's talk about this a soul pick because I think this is a little bit funny. It's actually not bad. Um, it's kind of funny they banned, uh, sorry, not banned, fired Yamano Cannon for this, but I wanted to talk about how it actually kind of makes sense. And on paper, the Carmen Corp draft is pretty decent, but um, it was probably just like a couple of the areas where they could have brushed up on or like people are still calibrating because it's been a couple of patches for at least for LEC. Um, it's a little bit hard to keep up with some of these leagues because some of them are like on various different patches. Um, LCS is always live. Like LEC is on 14.5 now. I think LCK still on 14.4, which is a little bit funny. So uh, it, it, it's hard to get 100% accuracy with what people are, are playing and what why it makes sense or not and team styles. But yeah. So to start, Fnatic actually opened with Oriana, which is interesting. I think she's going up in priority again, out of, even out of all of the other mid laners that are like kind of similar to her. That's chill. Um, what I am interested in seeing now, though, is uh, the Kaisa coming back because of her new AP build. I think it's changed because whenever she has these builds, it changes her scalings contextually. Because she, when she becomes a long range poke mage, she gets a lot better late game because of the natural idea that she can play fights more creatively. She doesn't have to rely on just going in and dealing damage that way. It's not like that, right? So, but this, however, reveal is that. Technically, Fnatic are a forward comp with Kai'Sa not. Um, Carmen Corp show Braum really early in response. So, <coughs> while it's normally okay to go Braum to specific matchups, I do fear that Fnatic will use the 4 5 in order to really capitalize and pick creative picks that allow them to play front to back really well. Or, um, just static the bomb because that ends up what happens a lot of the time and i'm surprised carmen carp don't invest bands into it where they pick a soul on four here actually kind of makes sense although it's a little bit homeless against something like Nullis. on paper it makes sense because of the matchup right a soul tends to fare well against a lot of these normal control mages and it's a bit of a creative pick because you both sort of like outscale them and you outrange them a little bit so it's kind of an answer However, because of things like the Kai'Sa, it's not like a true answer because I think in the end of the game, end of the game, like if Fnatic just play play it out really slowly, really chill, like I think they will still be able to have the range advantage, right? And it will force Carmen Corp to kind of play from a little bit more forward, in which case Fnatic are totally okay with that and they're flexible. The my other little grievance was, I think not enough. In my in my opinion. I don't think enough teams are prioritizing Aatrox as like the premier top laner because if you think about it, there's not really much else. It fares exceptionally well into every matchup against like all the good top laners except Jace. And being able to play Jace, it actually would have been a good Jace game. And being but, but being able to play Jace is a little bit contingent on the player because it's actually very hard to pilot. You could, that's why you see so many Jaces run it down. Even Zeus will run it down on Jace if. Um, he gets targeted very often for it. And, like, there's, like, infamous games where he goes 0-6. And, like, it's not a fun time. So I understand where teams don't pick the counters. But if you're not going to pick the counters, I think you should either pick Aatrox or you ban Aatrox, right? I'd almost rather them ban Aatrox over Cassante in the slot. Because when you have your counter, you go right next to Aatrox. Aatrox is happy in that matchup, honestly. It's like a fake R5, right? And at that point, you could have saved mid for R5 to provide less of a response and give the less time for them to react to the ASOL. But yeah. So that's the basically the logic behind the comp. But a couple of things the comp is missing is damage, for one, I would say. Uh, they have ASOL, they have Zeri, sure. But um, and when I when you compare the two comps, right, it just seems like Fnatic's comp has more agency and what and what and how they can play these fights. It's a very one very very one dimensional way Carmen Corp can play the fights, and they don't have the range to handle it. <coughs> so what's going to happen a lot of times is that Carmen Corp may feel like they can just play front to back, but they actually can't because they can have Renekton losing side lane slowly. The, the Sojuani is going to be a little bit useless later on. Like that, that's a separate issue with priority. And you know, although the Asol makes sense. I don't think it was enough set up around it. And there's a couple other things related to the draft that um, don't set it up for success. And that's probably why Carmen Corp ended up failing out in this series because there's not enough room for really to give themselves rhyme and reason to be successful with it. Right? 
And that's what allows them to eventually just kind of realize that their scaling is fake because they they somewhat get outscaled, to be honest with you. And, and which makes them have to play their champions like not according to their identity. Normally, you're going to play like, oh, let's just chill. Let's just scale. But you can't because you get outscaled, actually, against this comp, sadly enough. So because of that, it kind of made this draft fumble a little bit. I do think with a couple of extra like decent counter picks, it could have been done. But yeah, that's that's basically the reason why this fell out. I would like them to try the ace hole again because I think it's actually not bad. But uh, for those reasons, I think this draft kind of fumbled.